Here we are with Overlord Season 4, Episode 13. So yeah, if you like what you see, leave a like, subscribe, or comment. Let me know what you think. And also, let's get to the episode. Let's see what the final episode has to offer. Doesn't she like to kill? Because so far, Mare seemed kind of ruthless. <clears throat> oh, god damn, dude. The Witch of the Fallen Kingdom. I guess that's about Rena. <laughs> Let's go. She's, she still has, has a sword. Interesting. <clears throat> go Dwight. Oh? I guess she isn't meaning it. So you want to give it to Ainz? <laughs> oh. Dang. What's she planning? Oh, <laughs> he's like, yeah, jackpot. I'm staying with what Rena says. And she's already smiling like, yeah, that's my boy. <clears throat> oh, but I mean, does Eins need that stuff? I mean, does Eins really need that stuff? I mean, he wants to destroy the kingdom, not take it over, right? I guess this might be a trap somehow. What if someone is waiting there? Like maybe Alberto? Will we see a smile when he turns around? Do my eyes. Oh, aura. <laughs> man, I already need a season five, man. I need it. I want to see more. I love Overlord. I'm a girl, bitch. Is Aura like, I'm a girl, dude.
They will die. They have no chance. <laughs> Bone arrow. <laughs> no chance. No dice. Doesn't give a fuck. Rip. Oh my god. Oh, I love it. I love to see this stuff. Oh, is someone waiting? <clears throat> because I can't imagine that Zanek was part of this idea. <clears throat> okay, and maybe not. Hmm. Or maybe someone knows and and Cocutus made it already. This is a cancel. Omar is here. Uh oh. <laughs> it's interesting that Mare doesn't want to kill someone or is like afraid of killing or whatever. Feels bad about it. Because so far she always seemed like very like relentless, brutal. But maybe that was just because of orders, right? But this is the first time that we see a different side of Mare. <clears throat> that she that she maybe doesn't necessarily like to kill people. Which is interesting, I think. <clears throat> Is there a letter on the table? Oh, is Ainz already waiting for Alberto? This must be a huge plot that Ainz is supposed to come here. Yeah, this is like a plot. But why climb? Why is it so important that he sees that and goes through this all? <clears throat> I guess this is just an act, right? <clears throat> Maybe so that he attacks and gets broken? Or something? I'm very interested. Oh. <laughs> Will she start to reveal the plot maybe? Oh my god, I'm so hyped. And the sword. <clears throat> oh! But this time without time stopping, right? Heinz doesn't... Wouldn't have needed that against Gather either. Oh, uh, he throws it <laughs> and he punches him. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not. Maybe kill him, then revive him, and then he's super weak, right? That's what Renner wants. 
that climb is in a weak state so that you can just chain him up and keep him. I mean, that's kind of true. And another Nazarick, death is mercy. <laughs> oh my god, I love this so much. Oh, he's spitting. A shield, but not a sword. Hmm. Oh, he recognizes the eyes. It's always about the eyes, the gaze. Like with Gazev. Oh, he he has a sword now. <laughs> the reveal now? <laughs> yeah, they are they are so like, yep, yeah, she's on our side, he doesn't know. Oh the ring. <clears throat> but I think it will have not much effect, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it raises its limits, but oh damn! They always say that, said that he has like no potential. So oh, is this a sword's name, Razor Edge? <clears throat> so it might be able to destroy world items. Oh boy. Wow. <clears throat> they revived him. Oh, her eyes. She has creepy eyes. And he's in a weakened state, right? And that's what she loves. A red, uh, a black flower, a black outfit. <laughs> oh, really? He can do that. That's interesting. He can't even talk. I backed him to to revive you. Oh, here we go. The reveal. Damn, those fingernails. Oh, okay.
Damn. Okay. Man, I like the black dress on her. Damn, really? <laughs> Did I have a great idea? Wow. Her look was a bit weird, I would say. Maybe she's not liking it, but she sees this as an opportunity. So she has a plan. What's the plan? God damn, dude, that look. Oh my god. Oh, that look. That's interesting. This is very interesting that they give her a scene like this. I mean, it looks awesome. God damn, dude. Okay. Oh, from season two, I think. What did he do? <clears throat> did he go to Rena, maybe? I guess so, maybe? Was this climb? Then she saw climb <clears throat> and then she didn't follow him.
what is the end goal of all this? <clears throat> what was the plan for all of this to happen in this order, basically? Oh. He thinks she likes him. Nah, she's killing him. By how dumb you are. A monster that eats them? Oh, a hat. Three hats. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh. Hello, I love it. Oh my god! Bro! <laughs> oh, Marcus, he's really alive! And everything is destroyed. This is awesome how he sits there on the rumbles. The rubbles, whatever. Oh! <laughs> Badass. <laughs> did we make did we gave him a message I mean it's completely gone <gasps> and the end begins Nani! Okay, that was the episode. It was amazing, dude. I loved it. Man, that's what I'm talking about. My goodness, it was <laughs> so good. I need a season five. First of all, yeah, we get the movie that explains the stuff that happened between episode seven and eight, I think. And which is chapter, uh, which is volume, I think, 12 and 13 of the light novel. Because we went, I think, from 11 to 14 now. Um, but man, I need a season 5 ASAP. Man, this was so dope. This was so interesting. There was so much stuff. I mean, yes, we had no intro and no outro. But there was so much stuff going on. And I'm just completely intrigued. And I want to know more. And I know, want to know what the fuck is going on. Um, but let's start with the beginning, right? <coughs> Mare. We always seen her and she was always pretty ruthless, right? I mean, we saw her break Hilma's leg um, in season two, I think. She dragged her around on her hair. <clears throat> um, in the Empire, she killed the... She killed, like, the soldiers that were there with the small earthquake. And she never complained. She never said anything. She always did it and seemed, in that regard, kind of ruthless, right? <clears throat> and she beat this one guy up in... Season 1, when uh, Ainz wanted to fight Shaltia and the one guy was like, yeah, I come with you, um, <clears throat> I don't trust you. And then they like put him on a tree and then she beat him up with a stick, right? With a staff. <clears throat> so 
So she always seemed ruthless and never really gave a fuck, right? But here it's interesting, it seems like she <clears throat> doesn't necessarily like to kill. She It seems like she feels bad about it, about the people that will die from what she's doing. So that's very interesting if why we never seen that side of her before. Or maybe I'm just get it get it wrong. Maybe I'm dumb, I don't know. <laughs> From, from my perspective, it seems like she doesn't like killing, really. <clears throat> she doesn't really necessarily want to do it, but she does it because it's an order and she follows the orders. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and, yeah, then the whole plan that um, Climb is hiding the stuff, I, I guess... <clears throat> I guess... Rena maybe sent Climb to put away the crown and everything. So that they have time to set everything up for Climb to come back, I guess, maybe? Because otherwise, what's the point, right? I mean, they found the staff and the crown. We saw it at the end in the rubbles. Uh, there was a staff in the rubble and then the crown on top of it. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, I mean, Aura just kills the guy, no problem. <laughs> Easy. And then basically, uh, Climb comes back to the kingdom and it looks like they controlled Renna to kill her father with the sword, and then Eins and uh, Climb fight. And yeah, I mean, it was obvious that he has no chance, right? But the ring activated, but I mean, they always said that he has, like, no potential. Um, that he can grow from experience and all, but the potential for growth is not really there. So, if the ring um, increased, like, goes beyond the limits of the person that has it, it means basically, since he has no potential, I get, uh, since he has no potential, I guess, that the ring have maybe not much of an effect or very little only. Um, because I guess it, it's kind of like based on potential, right? Because the potential is basically what limits you, I would say, right? If you have good potential, but you're not experienced, then yeah, you have to learn, right? And get better. But if you have like no but you have like um no talent <clears throat> but also no experience then yeah you can get better by experiencing more um but i guess the talent might be the limiter in that regard and it's interesting that they went to this whole ordeal with a fight to get to the point that they kill him i wonder why i i can't I personally can't really see why they went through this whole thing because they killed him, they revived him obviously, and then Renna is like, yeah, yeah, I became a demon, and will you become a, become a demon for me too, so that we can be together all the time? Um, <clears throat> couldn't she have done that from the get go? Why did they have to go through this whole fighting ordeal to get to that point? Is what I'm wondering. Maybe to to see his potential, maybe. Maybe to make it more dramatic for like the whole theatric part that they just put this down this way. I don't know. Maybe. <clears throat> maybe so that he died and so he doesn't know what's going on, right? And then so Renna could be like, okay, yeah, you died, father died, everyone, everyone was dead. And then I decided to become a demon, join his side and became a demon and will you join me so that it looks like that she is still innocent right but because if you would have come to him and be like yeah i'm ratting this whole kingdom out and become a demon and will you join me then it seems more like that renna is bad right so i guess it maybe was just an act so that renna to climb seems like still an innocent girl and that she's just doing this because she had no other choice basically right I guess this that might maybe the point of this whole thing um but yeah otherwise they said Ra razor edge the sword i guess has maybe the potential to destroy a world item that would be interesting if it can um but yeah i guess we have to find out later i guess and um then yeah the whole scene with renna talking to climb like i said maybe to just make it look like that she's still innocent and just did it because she had no other choice i guess <clears throat> but i like the 
black outfit on her. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty dope. And now she has like two little wings. And as I said, I had an idea. What if maybe she becomes like a strategist for Ainz, right? Because she is plotting and scheming the whole time. She has like, it, it seems like she has a lot, of, a lot of knowledge. So maybe she can support Ainz by giving him like strategic advice, right? <clears throat> Help him plan and stuff like, kind of like Demiurge maybe in that regard. Because I'm wondering that if we get a season 5, which I hope we will, um, I wonder if she will be something like the Lizard Man. We see her now, okay, she's on Ein's side and then basically forgotten. And we never see her much again, or like Sabas. Sabas, we saw in season 2. And then after he got like demoted from his like um, Pleiades boss, uh, demoted because of Tuare basically. Um, I wonder, we barely saw him since then, right? So I wonder if that will be the same. We know, okay, she's on Ein's side and then forgotten. Maybe we see her once or twice somewhere, but not much. <clears throat> because so far she was always like, not the biggest part on the show, but like a pretty big part, right? We saw a lot of scenes with her and they seem to build up on her quite a bit with her whole twisted side, right? That she has like a good side and then the, the evil side basically. Would be a shame if that just leads to, yeah, she's gone now, now that she's on Ein's side and we will never see her again. <clears throat> but I have to say, when she talked to Albedo, and what did they say? Um, uh, Lord Ainz valued you enough to go this far in helping you. Don't disappoint him. And then she was suddenly like, right? Um, so, I don't know, was this maybe like... She didn't seem happy about it, right? Um, or maybe... <clears throat> maybe it was like, don't disappoint him, that she maybe was like, oh shit. I have to watch out to not, like, relax too much, right? So that I have to keep working to get a better foundation here in Nazarick, right? Because if she wouldn't do a good job maybe then they would be like okay you're kind of useless so die right i guess that's maybe what that expression means that she's maybe still like worried like oh shit i have to keep working i have to keep doing stuff but it seems like she's still plotting something right <clears throat> when she said um when did she talk here let me see what she said exactly let me speed this up then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then she was like heavily breathing out like. <sighs> uh, it looks like I. Uh, it, it looks like I'll be able to go past the last hurdle. <coughs> so getting in Nazarick seems like it was one. was like one thing in her plan like uh, was like one thing in her plan to get into Nazarick maybe but <clears throat> she had this plotting thing for a long time before I think Nazarick was open to the public right that before they announced that Nazarick was a thing so she must have changed her plans and then she got to Nazarick now and it's like it looks like I'll be able to go past the last hurdle I wonder if that has something to do with Nazarick, that she's maybe trying to <coughs> backstab Ein somehow, right? Or maybe if it's like based on Climb, that she wants to live with Climb, right? Looks like I'll be able to go past the last hurdle. But hurdle sounds like there's an obstacle, right? There's something that is that could go wrong. Something bad could happen or something. Something that is like troubling to do maybe and now she says she's able and now she's Nazarick so I feel like it has something to do with Nazarick only one thing went against my calculations I've never expected his majesty to come personally and act out, uh, act out such a silly role 
I wonder if that if she means with silly roll that she doesn't take Ayn's serious. Like, man, he got all the way out here and did this silly thing. <clears throat> He's not as cool as I thought he would be. But it definitely has something to, to do with the cube. I was able to realize my dream by merely selling out a single kingdom. Time that spent eternity together in happiness. I mean, that's from what we know, it was always this one thing that you had in mind, right? Being together with Climb, having Climb in a weak, in a weak state, so that she can just chain him somewhere and then just keep him alive, right? Um, I wonder if that's still her goal, because then I think it has nothing to do with backstabbing Nazarek, right? I'm, <clears throat> I'm still a bit uncertain because of some stuff she said, right? I just explained it. Um, I feel like I'm uncertain what she's planning. If it's against Nazarek, if it's just the purpose of she wants to be together with Ainz, uh, to, to, together with Climb or not. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit confused still. But man, her looks, dude, with the like black eyeshadows and everything. Or should we treasure our first? That was something I was confused about. Like, she was like, um, first we should exchange our first time together today. And then she was like, or should we treasure our first time a bit more? A bit more what? I feel like there is missing something. And then she did this whole singing and dancing thing. Which I think is very interesting because, again, so far she got built up a lot. Like, with her personality, with her scheming, plotting, what she's planning, what she wants to do and everything. Um, I feel like she was built up a lot. It's not that she's just a, a side character. I hope she's not just a side character that now gets shoved away. And it's like, okay, we never see her again. Because, like I said, I feel like she got built up quite a bit. And now she has this whole scene, which was pretty well animated, I would say. With, like, turning angles around her while she's moving around and dancing and everything. With singing and everything. Looked really awesome. Looked really good. Um, made me definitely more interested in her like what she's playing because of all that happened in this episode I'm really wondering what is her goal right I just explained it <laughs> again I'm just I, I keep repeating myself again but like what is her goal what is her plan what is she wanting to do what does she need the cube for I mean they talked in episode 2 I think about it like Alberto asked her if she knows how to like activate it or open it or use it or whatever and she was like yeah I can I can I can get that right so she wanted the cube and I guess Alberto and Einstein the others should know what the cube is all about right and if it would be something dangerous that could be used against them then I don't know if they would necessarily give it to her so I don't know what the whole cube thing is all about <clears throat> and then we get the flashbacks like about everything that went on like with the plan that uh, Demiurge wanted to, to check something out, and I think from what it seems like that she that he maybe went to went to Rena. And then when Climb came in, Demiurge like went away and she closed the window because Demiurge I think maybe was at the window in that before he came in, right? That's what it seems like, because why would she have the window open otherwise at that at night and whatever? And then <clears throat> the whole thing with the raiding stuff and the brother and that they are not allowed to kill someone. They didn't reveal who it was, right? But I'm pretty sure it must be Climb. Because Demiurge talked with Rena, I guess. I would assume from what we saw now. And then Rena and Demiurge made a deal. And they basically said, but don't kill this guy, right? And then Demiurge was like, yeah, don't kill this guy. And that's what Chaltia saw. She saw Climb and was like, okay, no, that's him. So I'm back. Uh, I back off. I can't go after brain and so yeah i'm i'm still like <clears throat> <clears throat> damn i have to say what is the whole point of the backflash of like everything that went uh, everything that went on i mean we kind of pretty much connected all these dots right but what is the big end goal was it all just to get to the conclusion to destroy the kingdom is that what everything they showed was built up over the last seasons? Was it all just 
to destroy the kingdom or I feel like it for me personally it doesn't necessarily seem like that right <clears throat> maybe I mean they got the eight fingers which were very influential but I think they are not anymore really I mean I guess maybe they are does Coco doll not really um <clears throat> So maybe that was all just to build everything up to the point that they can attack the kingdom and destroy the kingdom. I guess maybe. Otherwise, I'm confused what everything that they showed at the end of the episode was leading up to, if not that. Because I feel like otherwise there is something missing. <laughs> and then yeah, Albedo killing his father and killing, I guess, one of the head was maybe his father. Let me see, let me see again. Yeah, one of his one was his father, I think. And then the other two were the guys he was talking to when he made his dumb plan to get uh, to give Ayn's punishment, right? There were the two guys that he was talking to. So those three heads and now she killed him and outside everything was bloody. Holy shit. <laughs> like completely bloody. The whole house was covered in blood. Man, that was and then yeah, Marcus Raven came around after everything was destroyed and because he was like in, he was helping Ainz basically, right? So yeah, man, I'm, I'm just super interested to see where everything is going after this and God damn, man, that was a, a bombastic episode. But yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm still a bit confused, like, the flashbacks we saw. I wonder if that all was just leading up to the kingdom falling, basically. Because um, it seems like most of it was coming from Renna. Because she also influenced Zanak about it, right? And Demiurge said that 90% of the plan was hers, her idea. And then the whole thing, the whole dancing scene, what was that all about, I wonder? And, like, what is... Her end goal is she trying to backstab uh, Nazarek? I can't imagine that she's trying th that she's plotting something with Nazarek to backstab them or something because, from what we know, all she cared about was basically to get up to get climb right to be together with climb. And <clears throat> Nazarek allowed her to get that basically so far. So now changing her motive to okay, let's backstab Nazarek. Seem kind of weird, I would say. But I mean, we don't know what she... Maybe she has something going on with the third party, right? That she's maybe helping a third party to, like, spy on Nazarek or something. To get Nazarek down and then she... I don't know. If there is something you can tell me without spoiling too much or anything best, um, let me know if I'm, like, right or wrong with things, maybe. Let me know. But, yeah, I mean, we are, I'm talking for 20 minutes. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> It was just such a great episode with so much stuff to talk about, I would say. But yeah, I mean, we get the movie and I hope we get a season 5. I need it. But yeah, if you like what you saw, leave a like, subscribe, or comment, let me know what you think. And we'll say thanks for watching until next time. Bye-bye.